chapter 6.2 is linear relations, and linear basically means just a straight line. So for a graph, uh, these are also found in your book as well, but on a graph, a linear line means that all the points lie in a straight line. Not only do all the points lie in a straight line, when you draw a straight line through them, all the points are connected. All the points are connected. So that means a linear line is graphed straight through the points, connecting all the points. No point is outside of the line. For a table of values, um, when you're dealing with linear equations, you might have something like this. Your x's might go up negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and your y values might go up like this. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. The point is that each time I'm going up on my x values, these are all plus 1s. Each time I'm going up on my y values, these are all plus 3s. As long as they're all going up by the same amount, then it's fine. Then I have a linear relation. So both these are examples of linear relations. So that's a graph and a table of values. You might also be given points as well. Um, these could be given in point form. You would have ones like this, negative 4 comma 3. Then you would be given negative 3 comma 6. Then you would be given negative 2 comma 9. Then you would be given negative 1 comma 12. So you can have a table of values or you could just have points. And finally, you could have what's called an equation. And a linear equations, well, looks at, there's, there's examples of these in your book as well. But linear equations basically have one variable, or maybe two variables, um, equals something like 2x, or y equals something like uh, 3. Something that is just um, no, no exponents. No exponents, just a single variable and a single variable and just two of them. You could have three, but we're only going to be dealing with two. So that's a graph, table of values, points, and equation. What lines look like. As long as the x's are going up by the same amount, as long as the y's are going up by the same amount. That's the big key with the table of values and the points. All right. Now there's different types of data. There is a data set called discrete data which means that points in between have no meaning. So there's going to be no in-between points. Okay. Types of discrete data might be like the number of fingers that you have. Right? You have 10 fingers. You don't have 10.2 fingers, you don't have 5.3, you only have 10. Um, another set of discrete data might be um, number of hairs on your head, right? So number of hairs on your head, you don't have like 100.2 or 100.3, you have 100, or you have 150, or you have 300 or 400, right? Continuous data could be height, could be your weight, right? Because these values, there's lots of in between, there's lots of variation. I could be, I could say, oh, I'm five foot um, ten and three quarters. Somebody else might say they're five foot eleven and a half. Somebody else might say they're five foot. Um, six and two-thirds. So there's a lot of variation when you're dealing with height. Weight, the same thing. You could say you're 122.356 pounds, right? You could say you're 180.32 pounds. So a lot of variation. You can go to lots of different decimal places and continuous is basically, if you want to look at a graph of continuous data, 
that's the graph where we connect all the points. All the in-between values are included. A graph of discrete data will not have the points connected. They'll just be on their own. So continuous means all the in-between values are, are connected. All, the, all of them are included. Discrete data means the in-between values are not included and they're just like a series of points. Okay, so that's the difference between discrete and continuous. Next thing I want to look at are types of variables. So we have independent and dependent variable. The independent variable is the one that you basically choose the value. Okay. You choose the value of the variable, and then the dependent value variable is the is dependent. on the value chosen, right? So usually in a table of values when you have an X and a Y, we usually pick variable or values for the X. So that would be called the independent. Similarly, when we're picking values for X and Y, if we're given an equation like Y equals three X plus two, oops, if we pick values for X, say like I pick a value of one, then y is going to be something depending on what I picked for x. If I pick an x value of 2, then y is going to be something based on that value. If I pick a value of 3, y is going to change depending on what value x is. So that means x or y is what's called my... Getting confused here already. y is what's called my dependent value variable. x is my independent because that's the one I choose. Y is my dependent because that's the one that's dependent. That's in terms of an equation. That can change based on whatever, right? Like um, if you're talking about weight and calories. Well, let's see. Your, your calorie intake changes how much you weigh. So if you intake a bunch of calories in a day, this could be what's called your independent variable because you choose to eat calories. And this is your, that's a bad example, this is your dependent variable um, because your weight is dependent on how many calories you intake. So there's a real world example. <laughs> I, I don't know why I picked weight and calories, it's okay. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Independent, the variable you choose. Dependent, the variable that's dependent on the one that is just chosen. Or in terms of a real world example, you have one there. So we've looked at what is linear. Let's look at what is not linear. Pretty easy, actually. In terms of a graph, you might have what's called a parabola. A parabola is a not a linear graph because it doesn't go in a straight line. In terms of a table of values, you might have one that goes up, I don't know, negative one, zero, one, two, three. Those are good, they go up by one each time. But what if I had my y values going up three, 10, 15, 18, 25? Well, first it jumps up seven, then it jumps up five, then three, then seven again. So this is not linear. None of these are linear. By a graph or by a table of values, um, Similarly for points, if you had a series of points, say three, remember the points always have brackets around them, don't forget that. Um, if you had say three, five, six, and you had eight, 10, 13, I can see right away that the, these points, my x values, well the first one is plus two, the next one is plus one. So right away I know that's not linear. And this one here, the first one is plus two, second one is plus three. Yeah, so that one's definitely not linear. Remember they have to be going up by the same amount each time. So we've looked at what is linear and we've looked at now what is not linear based on points, table of values, and a graph.